He's have him with him. And he's inside, but they'll be there. Well, he was waiting on the, I think, the publisher to get oh. him out. So I don't know where he's at on this gotcha. supply. All right. I would like to welcome everyone to the Atchison County Commission meeting for Tuesday, February 13th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And if you please stand and join Reverend Sid Stein for the invocation. Thank you. I brought, um, good morning to all of you. I, I brought with you an invitation for soup and sermon um, that starts tomorrow. Um, it is being hosted at the Atchison United Methodist Church, but it is the entire county that is coming together um, this year, especially we have included churches from all over the county. And it is the county coming together for um, all the funds that are raised, though, that goes to Hunger Task Force, which goes to help all of our, our neighbors who have food insecurity as well as housing and utility um, needs as well. So if you have time on this or any other Wednesday to have a power lunch, I want to invite you to that as well. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. I give you thanks for um, these leaders and all who um, you have called to help. Most of all, I give you thanks for Jesus and that we remind you that Jesus was born in a little town smaller than Atchison. And so, God, you grew up under the authority of local leaders and officials who manage the majority of your daily life. And so we lift up our local leaders today. We pray for the county commissioners and for all who serve our local communities. Strengthen them with wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens they carry. May they manage their teams and projects with love. Keep their hearts pure and their eyes turned towards your face as they work in the best interest of all the people they are served to call. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? Okay. Seeing none, approval of minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from January 30th of 2024? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Was there a change? Not that one. So, yeah, there's three There's three sets, right? Yep, yeah. three sets. So it's the third set. We need a small one. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, and moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Last is three to see what Okay. Look for a motion to approve the minutes from February 2nd, 2024. Moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Um, and then the minutes from February 6th, did you say that was a change? Uh, no change in wording, just a little format change. There's a space after the executive session for the motion just so it's a, it was out of session. Yep. That fits all of us. Okay. Unless there's something else. No. That's what's really not a change, just a little format thing. Got it. Okay. So I'd look for a motion to approve the minutes from February 6th, 2024. So Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. All right, Commissioner Collins. Commissioner Knoll? Um, nothing locally, but uh, I want to congratulate the Chiefs on their big <laughs> win since it's a, it's a big area topic. I mean, this is a huge deal for the Midwest and and relative pro close proximity. I don't think we'll ever have this again. So I just uh, hope everybody had a good, safe time. Awesome. Uh, I would echo that. I would also... Um, Thank technology for uh, the ability for me to watch this game uh, in an airport bar and then on the airline and then listen to it on the radio on the way home and finally watch it on a TV here at the very end. <laughs> so my game was over three states and um, several thousand miles. But it was good. There you go. Uh, the other thing I do have is uh, we had a JCAB meeting yesterday and uh, uh, we're continuing to try to correct the, I guess, the Confusion right now over who has JCAB authorities, love more patches and both. But we had to do uh, basically a bylaws correction to there were resolutions passed and there were other bylaws and they weren't 
they didn't match up, so we've got that fixed. And we're in the process of trying to keep those lines of communication and everything. So nice. So you're remaining no, status no, quo. Not yes. Not, not, we're, we are still the JCAB. Yep. The Lemark has a satellite group that they think is a JCAB. And so we're trying to we're trying to resolve that. So I think we're making progress. Good. At least we're not going backwards so far. Okay. Positive. <laughs> um, I do not have any comments this week. Uh, new business. I have a purchase order um, to wire nuts. Look for a motion to approve purchase order to wire nuts for installation of one Paxton access control door for HR in the amount of $3,000 to be paid out of the ARPA funds um, that we allocated to courthouse renovations. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Snyder, Road and Bridge Superintendent, uh, Bridge 10.0-26.4 bid approval. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have here Swab Eaton preparing. He has to have a copy. Should have a copy of it or have it in your synthesis in any mail. Where's that in? Uh, Thursday, 2.34. Yeah. It has... Uh, there were four uh, construction companies that bid this, one withdrew. Uh, the three left were Comanche, Construction, Bettis Asphalt, and PCI. And at the end, we have the engineer's opinion of probable cost. So this is, a, there's two parts to this bid. Part A is a bid where we had a vehicle damage, a wreck, and the insurance company hopefully will be responsible for that part. And uh, the second bid, part B, is for work we need to do the deck. And I thought that it would be best to try to bid these at the same time and get the same construction company and save us some money, hopefully, on mobilization. So do you want me to list every one of these? I can. Can I ask a quick question about the overall bidding? Yes. Mobilization, they're going to come here once but, yeah but so they break that fee into two parts because they, the they did they did okay. and we talked about that and we'll discuss that okay the, I, I discussed with swab eating uh that figure and uh what we would do moving forward so uh comanche construction had forty eight thousand one hundred twenty eight dollars on part a fifty nine thousand two hundred fifty three dollars for part b for a total of 107,381. Best construction was $55,201.45 on part A and $64,765.24 on part B. And the total would be $119,966.69. PCI roads was $49,233 on part A and $96,428 part B for a total of $145,661. A Schwab Eaton's uh, opinion of probable cost was $52,000 for part A and $69,000 for part B for a total of $121,336. So it's in my opinion with Swab Eaton uh, to go with Comanche Construction and Part A, the insurance company, it's $48,128, which is less than any of the other bids. And Part B, which would be our responsibility, is $59,253, which is less than the other two bids. So that would be my recommendation to go with. Comanche, and that was discussed with Swabi also. Is the reinforcing still, I'm sure they need more than that. So is that just a unit price that would, so would the total cost go up as, see how much still they need? Or? It's an it's an estimate. 
but that's just for the small area that is full depth patching. Okay. So there's just a small area that's okay, going to be fine. completely full depth, and then the other okay. won't won't be. Right, scrap that. It's <laughs> the small area. All right. So I would look for a motion to approve. Um, actually, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, Comanche Construction Incorporated, um, to in the amount of one hundred and seven thousand three hundred eighty-one dollars and allow our road and bridge superintendent to sign all documents that correlate to this project number M.0-26. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Thank you. Uh, our township meeting, the uh, agenda, what I've came up with, and if you guys have anything else, please, we want to add this, uh, an overview of the township book, which was uh, written by, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this one, like, oh, okay. Norm no, Bowers. Norm Bowers, sorry, is going to be presented, an overview of that presented by Nelda Buckley from LTEC. So I kind of expressed some of what the concerns we had going on around here now, and she's going to it's 193 pages, so there's no way we can go through the whole thing. But there'll be important dates for the townships on when they're supposed to have things done, kind of uh, how their business is supposed to work. And that's probably going to be a 30-minute presentation. Is this a book all the townships already have as a guidebook? It's something that Michelle, I think, had offered in, in 2019 or a few years ago. But, but Nelda's going to actually present and try to go over key things that need to be, I guess, what, what they need to follow. But yes, it's something, it's the only information. Yeah. I, I can't tell you what the, how they have to operate their business. I can only tell you right. that this should be informational to help them if they have questions. It's coaching. Yes. It's a guidebook. Yes, it's a guidebook of when they need, wanna, like, they're, have so there's, we gave, we printed it okay. and gave a copy to each of the townships. Michelle, I think, has given a second or third copy to a couple of townships. It's definitely been made available now, whether they read it or not, you know. But there is a link that they can go to and yeah. on their computers they, yeah. that we've, we're sending that to them. Good. And I talked to Michelle. She said she could copy off some, some more of them if you guys want her, want her to. Wouldn't hurt maybe because there could be uh, new people that have gotten on board. To exactly. have, I think have it'd it. be nice to have one for each. Okay. Don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. It's, there's no harm in having it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and if they don't take them, it'll be there for the next yeah. meeting. Yeah. Okay. And then Gabe will be there to go over the county road standards he's been working with us on. Uh, I want to talk to him about cohort orders again and their pickup. And then the bridge culvert discussion. Do we want to have that at this time with like some of the uh, problems or instances that are coming up where it's a bridge on a road that's not really a road? Sure. Uh, I thought. And that's been expressed by more than one commissioner that that we need to talk to them about that. And then the then an open discussion after that. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to add? Because this isn't set. This is just. I think uh, that's a good target of topics, though, that will generate conversation. Yeah, and then we've got you know like other business you know things that right. Fit. Things will swing into the different topics. Is you might yeah. should we say open discussion regarding agenda topics or something? I'm kind of wondering if it's gonna. We have talked about it at every one of the meetings we've had, but it's still the issue that gets the most complaints, and that is Kansas Open Meetings Act, Kansas Open Records Act. That they're both they're subject to both of them. Um, we talk about it at every meeting, so you know, sometimes in more detail than others, but that's what generates the the complaints is that they're not complying with, with those two uh, sets of rules. So maybe Comacore would be. We probably ought to add it in there for yeah. at least a few minutes. 
to discuss it and then maybe even have somebody um, that has some experience in accounting be able to give them forms of here's what your accounting should look like um, because that we also there seems to be a wide variety of what the townships are doing and how they're complying with giving accountings and what they're doing with public funds. I think that's great ideas. Well, I think some of that will be should be in the township. They book. are those those are covered in the township book for sure. But you're so, just saying highlight them so that it's known yeah. that they were given them. So are you going to be there? I mean, is that something you could? Well, I've been completely ineffective at it. As I said, we've discussed <laughs> it at every meeting. Um, so maybe maybe a different voice explaining it um, or, or warning them. Um, I'm, I'm willing to do it. But, uh, well, if it's in that book, could we ask the LTAP? I mean, would they be able to? I mean, if they're talking about well, if you send me that email, and then I will send that, send me an email, what you want to go over, and I will send that to Nelda and ask her if she will make okay. sure that's part of her that's good overview. Do we, we have one of the judges maybe come and let them lead off with the discussion of Coma Core, and then they can leave? And we maybe, I don't know, is that not good? Yeah, I, I mean, still be there. Maybe have, if I have another voice, Sam, then you'll be a follow up question. Yeah, you know, I wonder if Martin. My oh, he's, yeah. I mean, he's yeah. a retired judge, so he would, I think everybody would know him. I think he would yeah. have some respect. Um, might be more willing than the, mm -hmm. kind of one of the current judges. What do you think, Joe? Well, I think that it's, I think that would probably be okay if you want to contact him and see if he can make it and tell me where you want to put that in the, in the agenda. Okay. Well, you just want to put it if Nelda is going to be the one, or you're going to ask Mr. Asher. Well, I mean, Mr. Asher may. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, this is my stuff that I normally go over is easy for me to yeah, take care of, but this Jack other stuff. Interested in doing that? What? We just need to get it done fairly soon because March fourth will be here before I would we say, know Depending it. on the speaker, if it's Nelda, just make a indention with those two topics under the township book, and then if it's Mr. If Judge Asher, then add him to the agenda. Yeah, I mean, I think come McCory the first or second. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He gets present at the beginning of the meeting, and then we can put it together. Yep. And maybe he wants, maybe that could be after the township book. That way, if Nelda wants to chime in, like, you know, if he's giving the presentation and she has something to add to the conversation, they could kind of piggyback off each other for, I don't know. Just well, a thought. One and two or yeah. two and one. Yeah. You know, whichever is first. I don't think it makes too much difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. They're the, I mean, I can if you can find out that if if yeah, I mean, he would he would be willing to do that, and, and we'll just put him first and send me what I need to put down here, and then I'll tell I'll get a, I'll contact Nelda and explain to her that he's going to do that right before she gives her presentation. How long do you think that coma four should be? 10, 15 minutes. Fifteen, yeah, something like that. That way, we have to idea of what that and maybe put him first yeah that's that's what yeah. i'm that that's what i'm doing and he doesn't, doesn't have to get into the, to the rest of the and he can leave right yeah after that. yeah that way he doesn't have to get in the escape <laughs> that's a good way to put it <laughs> <laughs> all right so you'll send me an email and everything right pat i'll do that i appreciate that what i like about martin doing it is because he lives in the, mm -hmm. the county more and he's uh they have farmland on township roads and so yeah. so yeah. he can be relate. yeah absolutely that'll be good all right, so uh, does that all look good? Does anybody else want to? I think it's all it's good. That's good. I think yeah. that'll take up all, all the energy. All, that, we'll, yeah. Yes. And did the and we're sending out? Are we sending those documents out to them ahead of time for? We're review? sending the the email or the where they can. Which documents you talking about? The agenda, or are you talking about the Norm Bowers book? And that and our road specifications, like so that because they can see it before, yeah, yeah so have, we'll get a hold of him and I will try to have that. Okay. Done. I think that'll be good just so it gives them time to review. Um, and they're not on the spot with having to read a document, you know. And then, I want to send that's why I want to get this done as soon as possible so we can send all the information now and they'll have a chance to chew yeah. on it and, and uh, see. Probably have a lot of questions for us, yeah.
I made sure um, mine, I just told them put them in their calendar so that they have those dates reserved. But so we've already sent notice that we were having the meeting to awesome. everyone. We just, and then we told them that we would be sending the agenda later. Perfect. So that's all been done. Good. Let me write this down. We can encourage more people to be there maybe if we had a drawing for a bridge or something for the raffle. For a bridge. For a bridge. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the other, uh, I got down there before you did yesterday yep. at Ottawa yep. Road. Yeah. So I stopped and looked at the Ottawa Road project and talked to uh, one of the guys that was in charge of it. They've got the, the tubes in the ground. They're covered up. Uh, if the weather stays good, seven to 10 days, and they'll be out of there. We'll just have to wait for the weather to to be able to work for laying the asphalt, but they're coming along. The weather's been great for it in school. Awesome. Interesting. Yeah, I stopped by the back in Leavenworth and uh, that's yeah. a pretty slick job. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's going to be a lot better. So it's got the big center culvert and the other two small ones. Right. On the one side, it looks like they're even, the other side, the two are higher. So it's just for high water flow. It's, I, mm -hmm. I like that. That size yes. It's cool. So hopefully they'll be done. And then we'll just have to wait. We'll get the road back open back up and, and uh, everybody will be happy. Yeah. We do have to uh, move some utility lines. Um, I asked them to bore. Uh, there was a phone line going across the top of it. And uh, I'm just letting you know if, if somebody would contact you, I prefer them to bore under the, the pipe than try to go across the top and cut a trench and then it'll never... It'll never compact like it's supposed to. So that should be being done here before long. But, they were gone when I got there, but yeah, there was the, the one guy was there and, and he was at the pre con meeting and we talked quite a bit about it. So uh, looks good. Just you know, a couple of questions to kind of read my do you have uh easily accessible you could send us the road plan that we approved for 2024, just as a reminder. Yes. Um because that... I've been asked like Hey, when's this road? And I'm like, I can't shoot from the hip with that answer. I got to review the the road plan and and all of this. And then things. part of that, you know, the, in that discussion is going to be Cheyenne Road. What are we going to do with Cheyenne Road? We're going to have to figure out uh, what we're going to do there for next year, or for, that's this year. Excuse me, it's on the list. But mm -hmm. how we want to attack that and uh, and look at funds available on what we're going to be able to do. But yeah, I'll send all of you guys. That would be great. Thank you. Just so we have it. Yeah. Top of mind, and then um, your pre-construction meeting on Ottawa then will lay out because in twenty twenty four you'll be doing like the the tubes and all. Of so the Gabe, I have been talked to Gabe. I talked to him the other day, and he is getting that all set up to move forward. And we we'll have to do the surveying first, and then we'll we'll move from there. Okay. And as soon as I get any information on that, I will relay that. And we talked about. Guys needing maybe more easement is that a process where you'll contact the landowners based on the drawings and i will uh or how does that i've i've never done that before either but okay. that'll all go through the uh, engineering perfect the engineers and then they'll come to us and okay. tell us what we need okay. and the same way with the culverts in the in the tubes they will look at what what they think we need to do and with our budget in mind on what we we can afford to get it done and do it right. But I have talked to some of the farmers who have removed fence uh, about whether they were going to put fence back, and, and none of them are right okay. now. There was one that was going to build some fence, but he said he would be glad to to wait and see in case we needed more, more right-of-way. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. I'll remember the other one I know, I'm when like, I leave because I had it when you started talking and then it's like. I feel like there was something else I wanted to ask, but I can't think of it right now. So the uh, objects or equipment or whatever in the right of way, we've discussed this. Mm -hmm. I have three that I know of. Uh, how do we want to pursue, pursue taking care of this? One of them has been, I think, the court on it before. Uh, one's newer at it, and then one has been that way for years. So 
Do you want me to get that information, give it to Pat, and we move forward on trying to get that removed from the right of way? We have to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and then leave. It right. It right. Easy. And and don't worry about. Are they all three in my district? Well, and I. Well, one is close. The one on Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's mine. I think it is yours. Yeah, that one's yours. Um, yeah, I think, and all no, I think they all are. Pat, because I was made aware of another one the other day, and I contacted yeah. the person. So I'm trying to do it right and okay. give them a chance to make no, it right. No, no, I understand. Really well, that's what I thought. You know, go ahead and progress the, before maybe they're sent out. Yep. I'll give them all a call. Absolutely, so that we've okay. done so our I'll due get diligence. That. To, I'll get that. And if you have any contacts you. for, I think I've got for two of them, but I'll get with you and... and okay. uh, and then we're that not going to worry about this. You talk for absolutely yeah. right, and then that You'll way it's like, well, you blindsided. Well, no, we're, and, and you're just the messenger. You say commission says we're good, right? Yeah. I mean, I can if you want me to, I'll contact every one of them. One, there's only one that I don't know whether he'll return my call or not, but the other two I think will at least talk to me. So, however you want to do it, Eric. Do you want me to do it, or do you want to do it? I or? think I, I think it'd probably be better if I did it. Okay, and. That way, and then say like we're planning on doing this, but you know we're going to give you the heads up, and once you give the opportunity to make it right, yeah, to make it right, and, and yeah. it, make it clear we're not picking on anybody. There's several people, and it's not mm -hmm. it's not just you. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a fallback spot. People, but then they you know let them understand what you will that uh, it's not just everybody's concerned about it. Yeah, so. All right, I will do that, and then we'll start there, and then I guess after that we'll kind of move to the uh, the big mailboxes that are brick and concrete that are in the right of way. After we get done with this, or do you want to pursue it at the same time? That's a whole other yeah. set topic, and uh, I mean a whole different group of people that are. You know, people that have made significant investments in new homes and sometimes put one of these mm -hmm. death traps up in the, the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's completely different than the, the person who says, you know, I don't want to deal with this equipment. I don't want it blocking my land because I want to use my land. So I'm going to put it on yours. And no, I, I understand it's completely different, but do we want to do we want to wait and then address this or? Yeah, I. Well, that's really going to be a first thing. I have a bigger picture for an initiative from the well, commission on whether you want to focus on those. Well, it's just it's also a, uh, a liability. Yeah. If someone hits that, because it's in our right of way, and we have allowed it, and we have a policy saying what the mailboxes are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in yeah. it's in the road standard. So that's that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. I understand there's others, but if we're addressing. There was a really good article, I know that you've read it, written by Norm Bauer several years ago about exactly how dangerous mailboxes can be. Um, both the, you know, the simple post with the thing on it and these, uh, these masonry things that people are putting on. Or hedge posts, you know, some people yeah. put great big huge hedge posts. And... Or decorative things with a flower. Right. But I, mean, you know. I just... You know, to, you know, my point of view, it's safety just the same as as some of the equipment that's in the yeah that's in the right of way. Thought of something else real quick. Should we haul off the uh, there at the county lake at the east end of well, the one pillar that's crumbled and fallen? Should we just well, I think that, that and I've got to get with Brian that they were going to use yeah. reuse that stone right to put that one back up. I didn't think we were going to put it back. It's, it's not going to be at our expense. Well, insurance, is paying for it. insurance is paying for it. Oh. And I thought that you guys were in agreement that we were. As long as it wasn't at our expense. Right. Okay. That That's the way I understood that. Yeah. yeah. And also, right there by where the Brown County Wells are, right around that, there was a tree that was kind of down in uh, it, right where it turns to go back east. Uh, it was coming from the north. There was a tree that I need to saw it off and push back. On the north side of the road? North side of the road. Pretty close to the shelter houses and that. And that. Okay. And it's, it wasn't a big one. I mean, it, you know, you could be right. sawed in two a couple times, but it was up on encroaching on the road. Okay. Make it All easy. right. I will address that as soon as I get back. The new blade should be here this week. Next week, Kat's doing a training with our guys on. Uh, 
making ditches. So that's something that's really focusing on this year is trying to get drainage going the way it's supposed to be. But they're supposed to be in weather permitting Tuesday and Wednesday here to train the guys on uh, ditch work. Okay. So I thought I'd let you know. Thank All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Hey, Justin. Ooh. You are up, sir. I have Justin Prejean, Central School Department's bond release resolution. Morning. Uh, so I thought this was all uh, buttoned up and finished at this point, but apparently there's another another resolution uh, to be passed. <laughs> Isn't there always, always, <laughs> yeah, there's always another revolution to resolution to Jay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a self purchasing bond issue, meaning that uh, in order to obtain the sales tax exemption certificate um, to build the project, you have to go through this process. Gilmore and Bell puts together all these documents, and effectively, it's a mirage of a bond transaction whereby the company that owns the property is self purchasing our own bonds. Um, it's just, there's no other way to set it up to be able to obtain the project exemption certificate. So that's how we do it. Um, I think I was here once post construction anyway. Uh, and you have approved a ordinance or a resolution or something. Uh, so this is just uh, hopefully the last and uh, the last touch point uh, on this. So Okay. That's my understanding of what we're, what we're here so for today. Same thing at the city you can do probably as well. So you can pursue it uh, an IRB uh, either through the city or through the or through the county. Um, I chose to pursue the IRBs that I've been involved with the county because right. I still have an ongoing relationship with the city. Um, so I guess my question is more about the city sales tax. So this does this take care of all that as well mm -hmm. yeah oh okay that's interesting yeah so. the city and the county can both uh unilaterally agree to abate sales tax for a project via an irb uh and it's different tax community yes that's, that's it i didn't yeah. realize that yeah that's how the the enabling legislation is set up yeah now i will say when the county approves one and it's a project that's located in a city the city does get notified and i think they have a veto authority that's and bring it up and sense. veto it um so there is a notification there um, but that's not reciprocated the other direction from the city up to the county for whatever reason. That's just the, the legal setup. Of it. Okay, so I have a resolution to pass, and then you also have bill of sale, re release of lease. And that's it. Okay. Resolution number will be Patrick, I have 2024-1535. Should have added that. Well, I just looked when Joe was talking. 1535. And I'm sure Gilmore and Bell did a great job. And Pat, did you look at this as well? I did not. But their it's... bond came and yeah. out. So. Okay. Sure. 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 Okay. So I would look for a motion to adopt resolution number 2024-1535, a resolution of the governing body of Atchison County, Kansas, authorizing the sale and conveyance of a certain property to Central School Apartments, LLC. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to right. zero. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Also, there's two copies. Do you need one or? Real one bell needs it. I, I okay, don't. perfect. Well, then we can only email you with this one. Yeah, that's fine. But they may want an original. I guess that's true. That's fine. We'll have on site. I'll have a tiny bow within that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 1535, is that what I wrote? Yes. The same, yep, that's the same one. Okay. All right, I would look for a motion to allow the chair to sign the bill of sale um, for in furtherance of the terms of the project lease dated as of April 1. 2023 between Atchison County, 
Kansas as a signer in Central School Apartments LLC, a Kansas limited liability company, an assignee and for valuable consideration, a signer transfers, assigns and conveys to assignee all personal property purchased with the proceeds of the Atchison County, Kansas Taxable Multifamily Housing Revenue Bond Series 2023 Central School Apartment Project. Sorry, so moved. that's a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Six, three, zero. Let's sign this one. This one. It's going to be the longest motion we've ever had. <laughs> it's going to be close. It's like that. Okay, read is enough to know what we're signing, but. Um, and then I also have a release of lease. So I would look for a motion to allow the. Chair to sign the release of lease um, from, so whereas Atchison County, Kansas and Central School Apartments, LLC, a Kansas li limited liability company have entered into a site lease dated as of April 1st, 2023, and the project lease dated April 1 of 2023, notice of which is recorded as document number 2023-0853 in the Office of Atchison County Register of Deeds, and whereas the issuer assigned an interest in the site lease and the project lease to Exchange Bank and Trust, Atchison, Kansas, acting as fiscal agent for the issuer and others for the purpose of enforcement of the tenant's covenants under the site lease and the project lease notice, of which is recorded as document 2023-0854 in the Office of Atchison County Register of Deeds, and whereas the tenant has exercised its option to purchase the facility described in the project lease from the issuer, and whereas all of the tenant's obligations to the issuer under site lease and project lease have been satisfied. Therefore, the property described in the attached schedule one is released from any claim of the issuer and the fiscal agent under the site lease and the project lease as of February 27th of 2024. Do you? Do you have a motion to allow me to sign this document? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 This is... It may have been eclipsed already. Three yeah. To zero. <laughs> so only one of them has the attachments, just so you know. Okay. Only one copy has the schedule one behind it. All right. All right, next on the agenda is an executive session, attorney client executive session. Um, for 30 minutes, and that will be Senior Village Administrator, um, Finance, HR, County Commission, and County Counselor. So moved. <laughs> I can do my part. I was trying to shorten you up there. I can help you out. Say attorney. Okay. okay. I move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 10.38 a.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by, well, that was, a. I mean, you said attorney client. Yeah. Let me start over. That's yeah. fine. I, I started on the wrong one. I move the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 10.38 a.m. for consultation with an attorney with the public body, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship as allowed by KSA 75-4319B2, and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the confidentiality of the discussion and that the board coming out of executive session in 30 minutes in the commission room of the courthouse basement. And those uh, present will be uh, Senior Village Admin, Finance Director, HR, County Counselor, and three commissioners. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay, we are back in open session. And 
Um, quick question for you. We have you on the agenda at 1115 um, to talk about a co-managed presentation. Um, is that, we just wanted your input on every other time we've been in executive session for attorney client, if that's how you would like to do that presentation. I, I don't know that there's a anything that's okay needs to be an executive session okay. in this proposal. Okay. We just wanted you to feel comfortable um All right. with that. So mm -hmm. All right. we, we may have some questions at the end that may need to be that. Okay. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm fine either way. Okay. So sure helps. I, 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 I suspect <laughs> okay. we may do that. Okay. Well, if we cross that line, then why don't we at that time then decide yeah. to go in or, okay. or hold all questions that get a, go into that? Then we can yeah. I'm gonna figure out questions security related that I don't think they should be public. Mm -hmm. No, I okay, absolutely agree. Okay, all right. Well, Tim Connard, T.S. Connard, um, you are up for all presentation. Right. Thank you. All righty. One for you. One for you. You and one for you. There we go. Now the uh do you have an extra one for me? Ta-da! Scott. Okay. Yep, you went. Uh, is everybody to... here that was uh mm -hmm. planning on being here? Uh oh no, not yet. So should we wait? Why don't we wait a couple of minutes? Sure. Not at yep, it's good call. Still 15, but I mean I don't want to uh be right. You want to be right and proper? Yeah. <laughs> good good call, Let's go do it. How's it going? How's it going? Good. Yeah, it's just been, uh, I'm glad this was 11.15 instead of 11 because I just came from the VA and made it. <laughs> with the stoplight and all. Yeah. Well, yeah, with the stoplight and all, actually the stoplight wasn't too bad. The, uh, uh, had to change in the back seat of my truck. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, well, I had test run and everything else this morning. So I was just like, Okay, where can I park? Where I can <laughs> so I was all still imagine on that. We just were talking about parking. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but then about a mile and a half south of the the Walmart here, there was a red Chevy truck stopped at the um, on the just at a dead stop on the highway, and I just passed this older gentleman uh, in a white car, and, and I knew that he didn't see that that truck was just at a dead stop. So I was pumping my brakes, hand, hand slamming my horn, and you know driving erratically trying to get this guy he stopped about 10 feet before the back of that truck because uh, i was just like you know as you as you see it you're like right <laughs> you know no, i was just expecting to see a big explosion behind me of metal and everything but luckily i now that i got his attention but uh yeah so was, you were in between then no i was i was on the left but i don't drive slow <laughs> yeah. oh, but gotcha. the but the truck was in the right hand lane at a dead stop gotcha. and this other I fellow was coming out. up on the right and uh yeah i was like yeah so but anyway got that i can already see this i'm trying to think of something for you to check my cousin michelle well, I nearly think of well we can pick on her in all sorts of different ways okay That's good nice. The uh, <laughs> Michelle and I, I actually graduated together. Uh, okay. The uh, she was in the she was in the top ten. I was in the bottom ten. So, <laughs> but uh, no, she's a uh, she's definitely uh, my right hand. She's the chief administrative officer, and pretty much it goes from me to her. And uh, we've already made it clear if anything ever happens to me or. What not? She's she's uh leading things until stuff gets worked out. So yeah, I actually kind of knew that and I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And then when you sent that email, oh yeah, yeah, because well, we were talking and I said, and she was like, "Who else the commissioner?" And said, "I said your name." She was, she was "That's my cousin." And I was like, "Are you sure it's the same person?" We yeah. like that's him. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, we all. Yep. Thank you. Right. Sounds good. All right. Okay, uh, folks, from uh, this proposal, we built off of the findings of our last discovery that we did. And when we looked at this from a co-managed standpoint, basically we asked ourselves, how can we help? And, you know, we looked at some of the areas that, uh, you know, the, the, the IT department definitely has a lot of strengths, but there's also a few areas where there was challenges as well. And that's the areas that we focused upon is, you know, where can we help with those challenges? So uh, the first part of this is just the, uh, 
and this is not a definitive thing because there, there are a whole lot of little variables and, and pieces to this. Uh, but what we're recommending is that we would migrate to uh, basically a, our ticketing system so that anytime somebody needs to submit a ticket, uh, they would submit a uh, ticket into our system. We triage it. And uh, if it's help desk or workstation related, it would get assigned to the uh, action uh, department, the IT department. If it's something server related or with the application whitelisting or any of the cybersecurity pieces, then that we would handle that. But being able to do that, then that way everything is under one system. And uh, the other aspect of being on one system is that if there was uh, if there was somebody on vacation and somebody got sick, we would also have the ability to fill in. So that, that's one of the other benefits of all being on one ticketing system. And the other aspect is the, the remote management monitoring system. And what that is, it's an agent that goes on every single uh, workstation laptop server. And what that does is every five minutes, it talks back to our servers and that's how a lot of the uh, maintenance and scripting that occurs in the background occur. So that way we're able to uh, say, hey, uh, if there's maintenance needs to be done or if there's an issue with that uh, computer, say if it's it's running hot or you know it's running out of memory or there's some other issue, it reports back and, and it creates a ticket for us. You know, basically it's saying, hey, I'm having a problem and the system creates a ticket to, to deal with that problem. Okay, and then that also uh, ties in with the remote uh, support software. That's part of it as well. Uh, right now, there's a few different uh, remote softwares uh, in the environment overall. And, you know, our recommendation, if we go down this path of co-managed, is that uh, we stick with this uh, with remote software that's part of the remote management system and remove all the other uh, remote management uh, software. So that way there's there's only one because the remote management softwares are the one of the number one ways that hackers will get in. If you don't keep that up to date, there's always a, a way of getting in and hacking that. So that's uh, instead of having to keep track of multiples, we just go with the one. So they currently have multiple remote softwares. Yes. Really? yes. Mm -hmm. For the most part, uh, there's they're utilizing log me in. I uh, there are just a couple others that are uh, in the in the overall system that came back in the report. I don't know whether they're actively used or not, or if there's a you know. The, right. I'm not saying that they're just. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not justified to have them. It's okay. just that you know uh, you want to reduce complexity and re and reduce the threat uh, scope. Okay, and then uh, one of the other things there, and I'm in the on the cover sheet there the uh under the required global changes just for, so you can i don't think anybody needs everything for me to read you every little piece but uh these are just kind of uh this isn't an all-encompassing list this is just kind of a uh you want to say call it a soup starter or a uh the beginning of how can we balance things out uh to for the benefit of the county we would want to be the primary vendor of the it solutions whether it be Microsoft 365 or the antivirus or basically anything that you would uh, that the county would need to go to a third party vendor to be able to get, we can handle all that. And that way we don't have to go track down other vendors and third parties to be able to help manage licensing and anything along those lines. Uh, one of the things that uh, is definitely a, a security threat and the, the IT department's well aware of it and we discussed it, uh, is there's a server called FS1 that's in the environment that has a uh, basically a almost a 16 year old operating system on it, which 2008 R2. Now that's one from the uh, uh, from leftover from the court system, but uh, from my conversations with uh, Mr. Lanter, that and and as I, as I said, basically he's got his hands tied. They're they're telling him they still need it for whatever whatever purpose but it is a security threat. So that's one of the real challenges is that, you know, they're, they're responsible for, you know, the security of the environment, but there's a system here that they don't have the authority to say, hey, shut it down. And they're having to deal with it. You know, if you want to think about it like that, 
want to think about it like an unlocked door that uh, they're not allowed to lock. So that's one thing that would definitely uh, be a huge thing that to get out of the environment as quickly as possible is uh, to get that old server out of there. And then uh, one of the things would be, I want to explain what application whitelisting is real quick. Basically what it is, it's a software that we teach it what's what kind of software is necessary to run to do the business of the county. And any and after we after the software learns that, then we lock it down and nothing else can run in the environment but those things. Okay. And that's something that uh we would be managing. And the rest of it is like the multi-factor authentication, you know, like if somebody goes to log in, you know, they they have to enter in a second code or hit a button on their phone or uh, what or in our code, those types of things. Uh, then password management service, and then cybersecurity training. Those things, this is the big part that we would uh, definitely need the backing and enforcement of the, the county as a whole, because these are behaviors, practices that are going to help keep you secure, okay? Um, you know, so that we... It's not an option, you know, because somebody, well, I don't want to lock the door. Or I don't want to do this or that or the other. Because at the end of the day, all of these things are threats to the county, okay? All it takes is somebody clicking on the wrong thing and, you know, a workstation gets infected and then it spreads and, and goes throughout the county. Uh, that's partly where the application whitelisting comes into play is that once it's secured, if even if somebody clicks on something, that software is not going to be able to, you know, that malware is not going to be able to run in the environment because we've locked it down so it can't. And everything about cybersecurity, there's no such thing as actual security, okay? But what you can do is prepare and prevent, basically putting those uh, pieces into place to be ready for when something happens. If you want to go old school with it, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And that's what it, uh, all these things come down to. And then the last thing as far as requirements would be that we uh, have global administrative rights to uh, all the areas that uh, are necessary. Of course, we're not going to ask for anything uh, that would be unnecessary for us to do uh, the work that we need to do. Like, say, if there was a software package that, uh, like an accounting package. We don't need to be, we don't need to have logins to the accounting packages. We just need to know that, hey, does the accounting package run? And, you know, if we need to do anything uh, additionally, then we would be either be working with somebody at the county or uh, through the uh, software support because everything comes down to least access, okay? Anybody, everybody needs to just be at, only have the access that they should have to be able to, to do the job that they have. Okay. And I'll be touching back on that a little bit more. So as far as the, just a high overview of the separation of, of uh, responsibilities in a co-managed environment, uh, I would see us handling the server management and maintenance, doing the cybersecurity management, uh, the active directory, that's, you know, the onboarding, offboarding of, of, uh, employees and uh, computers, those types of things, uh, the security, encryption, uh, auditing and logging management, of which I'll be getting into more here in a bit, the application whitelisting, I said, and uh, the support software management, and that's the ticketing system and the remote management monitoring that I initially talked about before that checks in every five minutes and everybody being on the same ticketing system. Uh, as far as the, the uh, county IT, uh, continue doing the help desk uh, support, workstation support, lifecycle management, the network management, the phone system. Uh, they, they've done a lot of good things in a lot of areas, but just like all of us, there's areas of challenge for, uh, and as I said, I asked our I asked our team, you know, how can we help? How can we help fill those gaps? And these are the major areas that uh, we identified. Uh, now, some of this may take anywhere from nine to 12 months to really fully implement, depending upon what's going on, because if, uh, one of the primary things is that uh, the county has to be able to serve the citizens. Each office needs to be able to uh, do things, and we can't come in and just shut stuff down to uh, 
uh, so that we can get things done faster. Uh, so that that's about the only caveat to that. Now, as far as the uh, the onboarding of everything on the next page, four of 18, uh, to be able to uh, bring on the servers, uh, onboard all the staff with multi-factor authentication, the password manager, uh, the uh, TS University cybersecurity training, all the application whitelisting, uh, also training the, the IT staff on the uh, ticketing system and the remote management monitoring because they would have access to these tools to be able to utilize uh, basically the same tools that we're, we're utilizing. So that way there's one tool set that everyone's using and it would be uh, uh, incumbent upon us to make sure that uh, they have all the training necessary to be able to uh, run these systems. And then being able to uh, onboard all the county staff and this this we this is something that we found uh, is way more important than what we initially ever thought it would be. Is that's the the onboarding of the staff, helping them to understand what's going on as far as their support goes, how to how to uh, what this co managed situation is. You know where do you need to go? Who do you need to call? All these types of things, and. Uh, how to how to submit a proper ticket because you know if you want to think about it like if you take your your vehicle to the the mechanic and he said what's wrong it's broke that's not very helpful you know as far as you know getting service started so part of that orientation and training is helping them to understand what a, what a good ticket looks like and how to get uh, great service uh, as quickly as possible because when you're having a problem. The last thing you want to do is, uh, you know, get switched around or, you know, have to explain it five times. So, you know, if, it, if they're doing it via email, here's here's the primary things that you, you want to be able to fill out to uh, make sure that everything's going. And then the TS uh, security training, that's that cybersecurity training that I talked about. Uh, and that that is a uh, that is the number one threat to you guys is is the county employees okay and the, that that's for any organization because 95% of all breaches are caused by somebody clicking on something they shouldn't okay so that's the uh the onboarding there but, on this numbering process is how much of this is online or videos or is it all in person or so is your resources that you can go back and rewatch yes okay uh some of this, especially the orientation, depending upon, uh, it will be, we prefer to do the, the orientation part and the explanation of things live, yeah. but we also know that that's not always possible or convenient for everyone. So we, um, as a backup to that, we have the video presentations uh, of the onboarding, yeah. but for the most part, we like to do those live. The cybersecurity training, that's all online. All those are videos. Uh, there's uh, there's also Outlook plugins for them for ongoing, uh, so they can actually just be an Outlook and uh, say if they have an email that they think may be suspicious. There, there's a little, it, the uh, software is called Catchfish, and they click on it and it will analyze that email for them, give them a probability score of it, you know, how dangerous it may be, whether it's spam or not. And then right next to that is additional weekly trainings that they can click on and, and do. There's a, uh, the cybersecurity training system has a score. It's kind of like a credit score. It's called an employee secure score. So that, uh, you know, top, top number is 800. And, you know, there's different things that different organizations do with that. You know, some will run a, a contest. Hey, you know, anybody that gets over this kind of, thing you know some companies do 25 bucks or whoever gets to this just depends upon what it is you know but it's all about encouraging the the team to uh take cybersecurity training seriously and as far as the the length of time or the time investment the uh the initial annual training is about 45 minutes and then the weekly trainings each one's like two three minutes so it's not like it's a they're, they're just little short uh micro videos that 
they can watch. There's four questions afterward, and each thing that they do correctly and each video they watch ups their score. So that kind of builds competition. And uh, even in my team, uh, the uh, I kind of quick little I made the mistake of telling, hey, anybody that has the highest score, you know, gets a hundred bucks. Well, my team got all geeked out on it. And then I had everybody hit a hundred. And I'm like, well, hang on, guys. <laughs> that, that was not the intent of this. So, but anyway, it does breed competition so that um, you know, they they are getting educated about cybersecurity because it doesn't just apply to uh the workplace, it applies to their regular lives as well. Okay. Now, as far as the uh, the co-managed monthly and the uh, the first part there is taking care of the servers and then the uh, workstation agents and licensing. As I said, we would be relying on the uh, IT department to be able to, to continue to maintain the workstations. They did a fantastic job at that. And uh, also, as far as the help desk uh, support has gone, uh, you know, some of the feedback we've got, you know, they're, they're the uh, the employees really like the the IT department from what I've heard. So there, there's a lot of great support for that. And that's that's something that is uh, very positive because you don't want them to be, you know, the old Saturday Night Live reference of, you know, Nick Burns, your company security guy or computer guy. Uh, the uh, so that that's where the, the ticketing and the application whitelisting uh, uh, comes into play. Uh, the end user support that, as I said, we're going to be do, doing the ticketing triage, onboarding, offboarding of uh, employees, and those things will be uh, basically created documents for each department so that if somebody's coming in, it, it's very clear, just little drop downs of what uh, what does the onboarding look like, what role are they going to be in, and I'll be touching on that more here in a bit, uh, but what role are they going to be in? So that and who is the authorized person that's bringing them th them on? You know who's who's authorized to say that hey, this person can come into the environment. And then the offboarding document, and there are um, there's the standard offboarding document if somebody hey they're retiring or they put in their two weeks and there's not any, any kind of issue. But we also have a protocol for uh, an emergency offboarding so that you know if someone did something nefarious or illegal or, you know, where they had to be removed from the workplace. Uh, we have a protocol for uh, basically a, a quick lockdown shutdown of that person. And then we can fill out the document later kind of thing. So uh, that, that piece is in place because we have learned that that has to be put in the play, put in there because it happens. I've got a question yes, uh, on this feed. This is the initial entry to get everything onboarded to get everything set up is the 1940640 so on that uh, in a year from now when we have new employees are they is it charged by the the employee when they come on or is there a charge for onboarding new people or I mean or new employees uh, no it the the onboarding is just kind of getting getting all the pieces into place to be able to manage the environment okay, okay. That's that's the onboarding piece. And then the next page five, that's the uh that's the ongoing management. So that if they're uh that would cover any onboarding, any offboarding. Uh basically it's uh a fixed fee for being able to manage all those things. Okay. Okay. And I have a quick question. When you're talking about protocols, um, if we were to enter into a co-manage with you your protocols would serve as our IT policies, correct? That How does that work? Because that's another thing that I was curious about as far as our policies um, go, if, if that's something. It goes back to as long as it's within the, the bounds of, of the law. Okay. It's, what, it's your house. You know, as I said, it's your guys' house. It's your rules. So you guys get to determine what that policy is, you know, uh, even so, if uh, somebody's no longer uh, here, uh, you know, it's a they just put in their two weeks notice. They're going on to greener pastures some someplace else. Part of your protocols uh, and policy may say that hey, we want to maintain their email account uh, for a month. 
you know, granted changing passwords, those types of things. So they no longer have access, but, you know, to be able to retain that or, you know, any kind of files that they were working on, you know, or that were uh, personal to them, uh, that was their work product. Uh, it's, we're not coming in to tell you how to, uh, how to manage the county. We're just saying that, once there's established protocols, those are the ones we're going to follow. And that's just basically a, an agreed on thing. If, the, uh, you know, we definitely have uh, templates or okay. ones that we use for other organizations, other counties, uh, but the, uh, we, we don't tell you how to manage. We, we just say that these, these are the policies that we need to be able to have so that we can follow them when things occur. Do you, you have example for saying of other counties that have done their policies? So that'd be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And so the fees vary based on number of employees. Uh, yes, as you can see here on the, uh, as we look down through there, on the TS Care Essentials Managed Server, there's 11 servers currently. Okay. Uh, there's 152. Uh, and granted, after we, you know, we, we only did a cursory examination. Uh, as we go to onboard, we'll be we'll do an even deeper one and really determine uh, of all the sites, of all the workstation, all the laptops, what is in production, what is not in production. And that's what the, those numbers are, is those are the counts. So like the TS Care workstations, there's 152 uh, end users. And I base that upon uh, the cursory report we did, showed 163. We know 11 of those are servers. So 163 minus 11 arrives as 152, okay? Uh, the uh, the next one down here on the TS Security 2023, uh, the Active Directory accounts showed 130 that, were, that had logged in in the last uh, 30 days. But we know that some of those are generic accounts. So, I just dropped that to a 120. You know, if that's going to actually uh, follow whatever the actual uh, employee count is. So, uh, you know, if, if it's actually only 115, then we'd, we would adjust to uh, whatever the, the actual number is. And those we typically audit on a monthly basis. So, you know, if they're, and that's where the onboarding offboarding comes into play as well from a, a documentation standpoint. Hey, if we know that we've uh, onboarded two people or three people and we offboarded one, we've got a net two change for the month. So uh, the next thing is the uh, Streamline IT license. That's for the, uh, the licensing for the uh, three people in IT to be able to uh, access the ticketing system. Uh, each, each user has to have their own license, and that's what that's for. And then the quarterly technology assessments. Uh, this is something that is becoming more and more uh, of a requirement for every organization. Is that you have to know where you're at all the time. Everything changes so frequently, you know. And what we want to be able to do, included in here, is on a quarterly basis to run deeper uh, assessments. Uh, you know, this last time we ran a network and security assessment, but we didn't really run anything uh, deep on the Microsoft Cloud that uh, all the email and OneDrive and all that type of things at uh, doing these other cyber attack assessments, Microsoft Exchange was in the environment. So that would be something to run assessment on and SQL is basically database. So uh, we know that there's databases in the environment. So, uh, being able to do those quarterlies. And what's great about those is that uh, those are actually comparison reports. So that uh, the very first one we run for the network and security assessment, we're gonna be able to compare where we are uh, in the first quarter to where we initially reported. You know, what improvement, what change has occurred uh, in there? So that way you uh, we have a running uh, a running comparison of improvement so that, uh, you know, when you come down, because it's very difficult uh, in IT to say, you know, well, what, what are the, you know, what have they gotten done? And a lot of times 
being able to speak the the lingo or the jargon is just going to it's it's not communication because there's not understanding. But having a, a generalized report showing, hey, this number went from uh, this score up to this score, you know, that's that's something easy to understand that, hey, the the environment did improve. So that's one of the, the benefits as well to have that consistent uh, polling of what the status is. Okay. Now, one of the one of the big things that uh, all this ties to is you know basically being able to uh, have security around our data, <clears throat> and by being able to do that, uh, and you guys are you guys are not special purple unicorns in this. Um, this is the way that IT has evolved for any organization that's been been around 20, 30 years plus. Uh, runs into this problem is that you kind of band-aid, 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 band-aid as things go. And then we get to the point where we are today, where cybersecurity, all these types of things are paramount to your just being able to stay in existence. So uh, what has to happen is that what we do is that we base all of the uh, structures uh, in IT for access on the organizational chart of the of the organization. So like uh, here, it would be, you know, the assessors would have their uh, hierarchy. The, the recorder would have their hierarchy, the clerk, you know, on and on. So that that way we're able to segregate and put into uh, place where, where are those boundaries? You know, where can they not go? You know, so somebody from the, the clerk's office has no business in the assessor's information and vice versa all, all, all along the uh, organization. And then within all those, there's also the roles in each organization, excuse me, in each office. So that being able to have a, a breakdown of roles, because nothing's based on uh, Casey or Eric or Alan, you know, nothing is assigned that way because people change, move on, whatnot. So everything needs to be based upon the role of the office. So that if, you're going to be the uh, the deputy clerk. Well, the deputy clerk should have this this level of access, and we would have security policies in place so, to say that hey, this is the person that has this level of access, and nobody else would have be in that uh, area. So that's kind of how we build it all out. And the way that the environment is right now, uh, all this has to be built up from scratch. For the most part, I mean, there's some pieces in place, but uh, for what for the level of work that needs to be done, basically, we, we just need to start from the beginning, start from scratch, and build build all this out, and we'll be able to build all this out. Uh, basically, we'll get all the structure built out, and then meet with each uh, office holder and all the pertinent parties to say, here's what we've laid out. What do you see wrong? You know, what needs to be changed? So that way, when we are able to turn everything on, then, or implement all that, then for the most part, those things are going to be uh, working. Now, I'm not saying that there's there's always going to be glitches. There's al always going to be little pieces that need to be tweaked, but that's in anything you do. But that's that first project on page six is the roles and responsibilities project. And that's going to be actually sitting down, meeting with uh, all the office holders, talking with them, interviewing them, getting all the information together so that we can have a strong understanding of what does your, how does your office operate and who needs access to, or excuse me, what role needs access to what. So that's the roles and responsibilities project. The next step after that, is, and all these are sequential, okay? So get the roles and responsibilities done, then be able to build out the active directory. That is, uh, that's where that organizational chart and the roles are gonna come into play is how this is all going to be built out. It's the structure in which we're going to be uh, building all, all the security from, okay? And then the data evaluation project would be next. And what we do here is we, uh, this is a, um, 
the for the, for the most part, the the data is going to probably be a, all sorts of stuff all over the place. And a lot of times, what we found is that there's typically uh, a lot of data that's maybe no longer of value, doesn't need to be kept anymore. But then there's others that hey, we have to keep this forever type thing. And being able to go through and do that data evaluation, work with each of the office holders, determine, hey, what is the retention requirements uh, of the county or of the state? And you know what needs to be kept and what's junk, what's trash, and what just needs to be archived. So we develop, we run software against the system, be able to develop these reports, and then each of them uh, identify what should be done with them. You know, with that data, should it just be left alone? That's fine. Does is this just junk? Is it trash? Is it, uh, you know, backups of backups of backups? You know, that are just taking up space. Uh, you know, I've even seen uh, organizations where people have had all their music library on the on the company servers. So, you know, those those things actually come into play, and and uh, even there, there's a, <laughs> seen lots of video games on the servers too that people have installed, but. That's just the part of cleaning it all up and whatever the the direction is from each office holder, they provide us with that direction, they sign off on it, and then we execute the scripting against that uh, their determinations because we do not delete any of your data without authors that without written authorization and being very specific about it. And then after the, the scripting is done, then a report is generated ex, uh, showing exactly all the actions that were taken. Okay, I've got a question. Oh, 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 can I, 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 hopefully that wasn't too... too uh, no, but, uh, okay, so currently you already do security for the sheriff's office? Well, we, we, we fully... We're basically in a co-managed uh, situation with them as well where we're managing everything except for the network because the the uh the their network is also the county's network. Okay, so is this based on additional employees besides that or if if you or is this assessment or including them? No. And there should not be. It should not be. Correct. They're in a, they're in their own they're on the same network but they're operating in a in a separate domain. So this contract is for the besides Exclu yeah. Excluding the sheriff's office. Okay, this is in addition to. Well, the, the sheriff's office has their completely separate agreement mm -hmm. that th this has nothing to do with the sheriff's office. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I didn't know whether this was all encompassing, even, you know, like we'd have one contract with you per county or, you know, see where I'm, I'm asking. Right. And then, uh, and if, if this contract covered that, then those people would already be onboarded, and yeah, that, that's where. Right. Oh, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Right now, the 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 sheriff is outside of scope of this. Okay. Okay. Now, if we went forward in this as far as one agreement, if it made sense to, uh, if we were doing both at that point, and the the networks were still separate, or excuse me, we were all, if the network was still all the same then it would potentially make sense to bring everything together. That's what I was wondering, yeah. whether it would be a better thing to have all under one contract well, or one, not. And, and I'm not, that's, that's okay. definitely not my realm, but uh, that's just how I think. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, one of the things that's right now, you know, right now the way that things are, uh, are not in compliance with the criminal justice information uh, systems, okay, because the sheriff's office uh, federally should be on its own separate network completely, okay, their own firewall, their own internet service provider, everything's separate. But right now, that's not the way it is. But it's it's on the roadmap for later type thing. So you know, baby steps. You don't get in trouble overnight. You don't get out overnight. You know, so mm -hmm. we're just working in that in that direction. So, but eventually, they should be completely isolated per sieges. Um, I don't know if I should wait till the end, but I was just curious as we're walking through this, I know you did your initial scan, yeah. kind of that top level scan. Mm -hmm. uh, do you foresee any of the programs that we currently have and pay for 
can be no longer needed with a co-manager system as far as licenses or programs through you, um, would that be a duplication of services? Uh, like no, this? no, that, that was one thing that, uh, again, we just thought, we, we looked at it as how can we help? Yep. You know, yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know, as I did say, we we would want to be that primary third party vendor, right? Uh, you know th that we we would be basically we'd be the primary vendor for everything. Like the Microsoft three sixty five is uh, currently through Converge One, we would be able to transfer that over to our control. Okay, so that's what I was trying to understand from a monetary standpoint. Some of those fees that we're paying to them we would no longer be paying to them because it would be encompassed in well, they, they, working with you. Uh, as, as things are seated right now, there would not be any, uh, about the only change might be any kind of uh, remote support software like the log me in. Okay. Uh, that would potentially go away. Uh, but you know. uh, other than that, there's, there's not really we're not coming in at this as a uh, our our approach is not one of overarching control. We're we're coming in from a point of how can we help? Mm -hmm. Where where where's the where's the places that they've had challenges that we can help fill and and help to strengthen? Right. So that's kind of where this is, and we're we're not looking for any kind of major uh, shifts other than. The, the ticketing system in the remote monitoring. So on that, what you're just discussed in discussing is that um, so you could take over and be the vendor for it, but that's an additional charge that's not included. In no, it. no, I actually that's bas basically it's a it's a net neutral. It's just okay. a matter of that's what I was trying. Yeah. To, sorry, maybe yeah. I didn't. Well, that's, throw, that's thank because, you for clarifying. Well, I, that's kind of what I was looking at on what I was asking about the sheriff's office. You know, was what is what do we have that's existing that's budgeted over here that may be included here? So, you know, so how that looks overall might look different on, you know, if, if we can get rid of some of these things that we've already budgeted for, that's in a different thing to pay for right, right. here. That's yeah. what I right. think we're right, right now. We're, we, we're not privy to all the, all the different areas. Uh, that is part of something that we would, uh, be able to help with, but at the same time, this is a co-managed environment. There is an IT director in place. Again, we're here to help, not to. Uh, one one of the things that uh, internal IT departments do suffer from is isolation, because if you're if you're only in one environment all the time, you're, you're not seeing all the all the different things all the time that are. Uh, all the changes, all the new new things that are coming out, those types of things. It's kind of like being on an island sometime. Uh, you know, it's that uh, I remember when uh, the first time I deployed overseas, uh, the music you took with you was the music that you had the entire six months you were gone. And when you came back, everything was different. And you songs you never heard of and all these types of things. It was all fresh and new because you only had what you took with you. And a lot of times that your IT departments, when they're isolated like that, and not in multiple different uh, arenas every single day, because you know, our, our team's in 25, 30 different environments every single day, so that we're always seeing all the different things that are changing and what new technologies, and we're sending our people out all the time to different conferences and trainings and all that type of thing. So uh, that's just part of the nature of how we have to operate. But as far as you know, the vendors right now, I'm not seeing that where we're negating anything, even that the antivirus in, in place, we're not looking, we're not recommending any changes in that right now because there's I, I have not seen any kind of justified reason to do so. The uh the application whitelisting uh that we're adding in here, that is absolutely a security uh option, or excuse me, not option, a security requirement, because that is the second, you know. Second most important thing behind the uh, cybersecurity training is the ability to say no, the the viruses can't operate on this system, the malware can't run, all these types of things. So that's that's why it's been included in there, because everything is about how do we keep you secure. So, 
if like a subscription to something we have now, but you want to include it into your plan here and you actually supply that, is that an additional, I mean, is that just a push cost, whatever? Yeah, yeah, it would just, okay. if, if you say, say if they're like the Microsoft 365, you yeah. guys are currently paying Converge for that, mm -hmm. okay? And basically uh, pretty much whatever you're paying Converged, we, we would say, hey, we would like to, be, uh, we want to be the primary vendor for that. It, that account would just transfer over to us and that expense will just shift from being paid to them to us. So it'd just be a net cross, just changing who you're paying. Okay. Say, say, let me put it this way. Say if you had a, uh, if, if you had to change, if, if you had an oil uh, change place and you bought 5,000 gallons of oil from Shell every month. And now, and it's, now you want to be able to go over to BP and you still need 5,000 gallons. You're still getting the 5,000 gallons and, you know, we're going to assume the price is equal. It's just a matter of who you're paying. Okay. I guess they're just looking at it. You, you, you wouldn't, it's hard to, for me to ask a question. That's okay. Yeah. I guess it would, uh, my fear was that, okay, you were getting the same oil, but then under the new uh, person you're buying it from, it could be like a proprietor, something tacked on it because now you're the, the holder of it. You're you're the doing the work. So then you would get an extra 5%, 10%, whatever for supplying that same thing that we were getting over here yeah. and, and that's just i don't know that's does that make sense what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. now that it would be all lumped together it's like uh we're going to get our our cut whatever that may be i don't know i i don't have the technical terms for it well as far as what the the standard i mean pretty much for with microsoft licensing the price is the price okay and that's just okay. I, I would I would be highly surprised if Converge One was charging any more than what we are on because it's Microsoft advertises the prices of it and you know that's basically what you work off of. Okay. Because why would anybody say, you know, hey, why do you want to charge me 20 bucks when it's 1250 kind of thing online? So if that helps, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's yeah. clear as mud or Okay. Anyway, uh, carry on. The, the Any other questions before we continue there? Okay. The data evaluation project, again, that's getting everything cleared up, cleaned up, because what you want to always make sure of is that you, uh, before you start any kind of project, you know, whether it's a remodeling project or whatnot, the very first thing you want to do is clear, clear out the area, <clears throat> get everything out that doesn't need to be in the way. And that's what the data evaluation project is uh, structured to do. Then the next one is the file structure project. And that one is going to follow along the, the security protocols that we talked about as far as uh, the roles and responsibilities. How do we establish least access? What uh, elected offices should have access to what? What information is uh, has to be required or, or available to multiple offices? and be able to structure that, uh, those files out from uh, that direction. And then from there, once that file is built out, then that group policy comes into play where you're you're saying that deputy, collect, uh, deputy collector, uh, you know, the uh, collector admin one, collector admin two, you know, whatever the, the designations are, you know, say if there's two different people in the office that have different uh, roles that have different responsibilities and the elected officer has said that no they don't need to cross train or whatever then we would want to be able to lock those down to only those people in those positions would have, have that access so that once all those things are done our data is our organization is structured according to our organizational chart it's structured according to the the roles of everything. We've cleaned up our data. We've reorganized everything. Uh, we built out those file structures and put the rules in place. Okay. Now it's a matter of 
the data classification, what is personal identifiable information? You know, what what files have that uh, those social security numbers, those uh, ACH numbers, credit card numbers, just whatever type of information uh, that you have a, a duty to protect, uh, that software will will go into place, be able to identify that data. We'll be able to isolate it, make determinations uh, on whether it needs to be encrypted or not, uh, whether at rest or or in uh, transit. And just so you guys know, when it comes to data, uh, a lot of data these days is encrypted or uh, locked down while it's being transferred over the internet or over your networks. At rest means that as it's sitting on the server, it's encrypted. OK, so that uh, if you want to think about it, like it's encrypted all the time type thing. Uh, and once everything is ident identified, encrypted where need be, then the auditing and logging uh, aspect will come into play. Now, this part, uh, there is additional cost to this because there's licensing that's involved uh, per end user on this and then the management of that. But I saw no reason to uh include that because i can see this taking nine to 12 months to uh get all this done because the number of hours that actually is going to be necessary to even get to that point so i saw no reason to uh include those costs in here until we're ready for them so and i would probably put that somewhere Licensing is going to be somewhere ballpark in the fifteen hundred a month, uh, just for the licensing, and the the management of that would uh, be somewhere thousand to fifteen hundred uh, for the on a monthly basis for all that, and that's what's going to lock lock that down. That's what's going to create all the logs of uh, who's accessed what, when, where, and uh, we're able to keep that back as long as we need to keep it back. And that would be for all of the licenses, the 152 licenses that yeah. you mentioned. Well, earlier. well it per employee. Be. So okay. so that so, would be 120, whatever the where the actual employee account is. Okay. It goes down to the active directory users. And again, who can access what? Because one of the things that we would be getting rid of, or at least where we couldn't get rid of them, we would highly restrict the generic accounts. So that when it comes down to who accessed what, well, the generic accounts can't access anything. Okay, they can't access any kind of uh, personally identifiable information or anything of a sensitive nature. Those generic accounts would be absolutely barred from being able to access any of that. It would just be the named accounts. So that when it comes down to saying who accessed this mm -hmm. file, well, we know exactly who accessed that file because it came from their account. That's why it's account based. But as long as we build it the correct way with the department heads and elected officials building alongside you, so, you know, X, Y, and Z can only have access mm -hmm. to my files, then that shouldn't be needed probably in the future, right? Because they build out who would have access. So you never really need to check who accessed well, it. Well, the thing is, if there was, if there was an area that, um, uh, and if an elected officer said that, uh, hey, this uh, this information, everybody in my office needs access to, but it's still privileged information mm -hmm. and something was released and we were able to identify, hey, it was this document was released, who accessed it? Okay, follow it. And, and that's how you're able to uh, identify and that's where the auditing and logging comes into place. Got it. Thanks for clarification. Oh, no problem. I mean, it's... The, the the challenge to all of this is that so much has changed and there's only so much you can do at once. You know, there's only, only so much adjustment you can make because all these are new expenditures that you're looking at. So that, how, how do you work it into the budget? You know, how do, how do we justify it? You know, where's the value proposition? And that's what all this comes down to is being able to protect the data and the responsibilities of doing it.
I guess in that scenario, if they all had looked at that same document, you still wouldn't be any better off than. Well, and if if everyone had looked at the exact same document, if, at at least if anything else, if there was five people, you know, it's those five. And but part of it may also be because there's time date stamps as well, you know, that, hey, when was this released? Well, this person had looked at it for a year, you know, type mm -hmm. thing. So that that's where the, those pieces come into play. And from a disclosure standpoint, and, and you know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not the lead detective or anything like that. But when you're looking at uh, data exposure, it's typically close time to when something was breached initially. You know, granted, there there may be a little bit of time, but it's not going to be a year later or two years later and that type of thing. So that's uh, that's the uh, all those projects they tally forty three eight sixty, and again th those would be uh, just a, a one at a time sequential project uh, as we build through those. Now, the every single one of those is absolutely dependent upon cooperation and collaboration with uh, the county staff. You know. We're, we're, we're not able just to wave a magic wand and, and know how every office runs. So, you know, we are going to need time with uh, the staff to interview and ask questions and understand and build out, build those structures out, uh, you know, because initially it'll just be on pen and paper kind of uh, writing everything down so that we can build out that understanding. Uh, the rest of it is the, uh, the master services agreement. That's just basically how do we treat each other? You know how do we bill? What are the rates? All that type of thing, and then the uh, just the managed services addendum, and that one is a uh, fairly generic one. When we get when we get down to actual uh, mm -hmm. parsing out of responsibilities, we'll we'll get into that much deeper and identify who's responsible for what area. So, and that. All of that goes down to the very last page where there's uh, the summary of everything. So you adjust it based on the actual employee count. Correct. Because with the self senior village coming right. up, it's going to change that number. Right. It, it'll be based upon the actual employee account and the actual uh, endpoint workstations. Yeah, all that. And, you know, the uh, one of the things that uh, we really focus on, and I, I want you guys to understand how this works for a managed services provider like us. OK. On a say, if you guys were just paying us uh, at an hourly rate. That is one of the worst ways of, of managing IT because. It benefits us to rack up hours. When you're working on a uh, managed services agreement where there's a uh, fixed fee, well, it's incumbent upon us to make everything as efficient, effective, and economical as possible so that everything just runs in your environment as smoothly as possible. Because if everything's running smoothly, we get to put less labor into it, and that, that way we're more profitable. So it's an actual very big win-win so that everything just works for you guys. And it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Um, so I haven't had time to read the the contract, but is it an annual agreement, um, or how do you set? Them? Uh, we, we typically set them as uh, three year agreements. We do have a sixty day out in our agreements. We call it our sixty day no hostages guarantee. Okay. And what that basically is is that for whatever reason, if there's uh, any type of breach or uh, issue where we're not uh, meeting our obligations. The process is basically that you guys would notify us, hey, we feel that you're in breach. And then if we if we don't have that resolved within X number of days, then you know that's that's your 60 day out. And every, we go through an offboarding process and uh we shake hands and part ways. Um another question. Let's um say it's a different IT company sitting here and you're hearing this presentation um, and you're in three years, you're interested in 
doing an RFP for the county or, mm -hmm. or whatever that looks like. Do you anticipate these projects? I mean, because the way I'm reading them, and again, I'm not uh, an IT professional by any means, but they're tip they seem to be kind of cleanup projects. So like once it's cleaned up and running smoothly, then the onboarding, like, I guess I'm just asking, will the onboarding services of like $19,000 typically be with any company? So like in three years, if you do an RFP, you're looking at onboarding services with a different company. I, I just don't understand, you know, want to understand those relationships. Yes. Uh, typically, yes. Okay. Uh, pretty much any uh, managed services provider is going to have uh, an onboarding and the a lot of the onboarding on this one, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the cost of the onboarding is actually tied to the two-factor authentication aspect because uh, there has to be a, uh, that's very labor intensive because it's a matter of, there's a lot of training involved with that because honestly, it doesn't matter how many documents and uh, videos and and personal explanations you make some folks take longer to for the light bulb to come on as far as what two-factor authentication is and and how how it's set up and how it works okay. but that that's quite frankly that's a significant uh part of the onboarding but once that's in place then that so three years from now mm -hmm. uh you say tim we put it out for rfp we've decided to go with uh company xyz and you know if you guys are on uh this type of two-factor authentication right now and you say you know hey we want to be able to keep it just like what i was saying with the microsoft account we would be able to say okay this this uh multi-factor authentication account is now going to get transferred over to the control of the incoming okay. uh, provider okay so that's basically what it is so that you guys don't have to go through uh, that onboarding and that implementation process again. again. Okay. Right. Perfect. Thank you yeah. for explaining that. No, no problem. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of moving pieces here. And if you guys, uh, you know, have questions, I, I want you guys to be able to ask every question you can possibly think of and, and throw them at me later too, because I, as I've told you guys before, I want you guys to be able to make an informed decision about how to move forward and, and how to protect the county. And as far as your projects, those are just, those are suggestions that you're making on our behalf. But if like our IT department wanted to tackle a project, then that's the collaboration piece you were talking about that you're willing to work with. Um, yes, but it, it's kind of a, uh, the only challenge that I would see to that, you know, we I, I feel that we have a great relationship with the, the county IT already. However, it, it would come down to a, a, a matter of, if they wanted to assist in the project, okay. then it would have to be some, some, but you can only have uh one chef in the kitchen kind of thing, okay. you know, so that if, if they wanted to help, that'd be fine. But, you know, we'd need to be able to make sure that there's a hierarchy of, yes, of authority of how this project's going to get moved down the, down the course there. Okay. Thank you. You guys have any other questions? I've got some that I think were new to the executive session. And okay. Um, not very long, not very long. The, 15 right, minutes, 20 minutes. The client with uh, commissioners, county counselor, Tim, uh, Scott, yeah. and she county she attorney, me. chair. Yeah. HR. HR. Finance. 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 Yeah. All the court. <laughs> I can't read. Yeah. 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 If Corey wants to be in here, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody but Corey, that type of thing. Okay. I guess <laughs> I don't know. It's... Say attorney client. Yeah, and, and security. Yeah, you and guys have questions. Secu oh, the security template. Yeah, either prob uh, probably the security one is more accurate. Yeah. It's, it's it. Okay. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session for 15 minutes. Is that right? The subjects to be discussed during the closed or executive meeting are matters relating to security measures that protect the information systems of the county. The justification for the closed meeting is that 
discussion of such matters at an open meeting would jeopardize such security measures and is authorized under KSA 75-4319B12C. The board will come out of executive session in 15 minutes in the commission room uh, of the courthouse basement, and those present will be the three commissioners, county counselor, finance, HR, sheriff, uh, county attorney, and IT. Do you want to be in? Yeah, any Corey Scott and yeah. uh, Tim Connor. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes the previous evening. We just parted with DeKalb County, Missouri, and Andrew County, Missouri is back in the uh <laughs> conversation and so is Grundy County. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. And and as always, if you guys have questions, feel free to reach out. Yeah. And so uh, I anticipate we'll want a round table with our team and kind of oh, absolutely. feedback and then be in touch. All right, guys. Thank you much. Thank you. Okay. It is 12 30. Um, just a little bit. I'm going to put this ports yeah, maintenance. Space. We're going to come back and um, and we have 12:30 executive session. To uh, uh, non-elected for an hour, commissioners. Tell me if I go too fast. HR, finance, county counselor, EMS. Sheriff, IT. Oh, okay, I was just making sure you know. No. And appraiser. Is it 30 minutes? Uh, an hour. Okay. Didn't you want Corey on this one too? Yeah. yeah. Who did you say last? Um, I didn't so say EMS, it. sheriff, so IT, like, and appraiser. Okay, I didn't hear it. Yeah. I'm just making sure. I was just making sure Scott heard just. <laughs> and not me. Yeah, yeah, I said you. Oh, yeah, you. I sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, for sure. I'll move the board of county commissioners recess into executive session at twelve thirty-two p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA seventy-five dash four three one nine B one, and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee. And the board come out come out of executive session in one hour in the commission room of the courthouse basement, and those present will be. Three commissioners, HR, finance director, appraiser, IP, county counselor, EMS, and sheriff. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay, we are back in open session and we have an attorney client uh, executive session. We're going to do the announcement. Yeah. But you're going to do this first. 15 minutes, yep. Okay. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 1 p.m. for consultation with an attorney for the public body which would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship is allowed by KSA 75-4319B2 and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the confidentiality of the discussion and that the board come out of executive session in 15 minutes in the commission room of the courthouse basement and those present will be um, three commissioners, county counselor, finance director, and the sheriff. Second. Case been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passed to three to zero. Sure. Okay, we are back in open session. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, schedule a non elected executive session for 40 minutes. Commissioners, HR. Mm -hmm. Finance and County Council.
to 40 yes. minutes. Yep. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners recess in executive session at 1.49 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1. And that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee. And the board come out of executive session in 40 minutes in the commission room of the courthouse basement. And those present will be the three commissioners, HR, finance, and county council. Second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Right. Okay, we are back in open session, um, and I would look for a motion to allow the chair to sign the bond trust indenture uh, for the management and operating reserve fund uh, to pay USD $377, $2,500 for the first quarter payment on maintenance 2024 Effingham site and to pay ASAF um, $10,000 for the first quarter payment on maintenance 2024 Atchison site. Do I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. County councilor updates. Uh, two weeks until the tax sale now, and uh, things are moving along as expected. We've had uh, uh, quite a few properties redeemed last week. We had five, I think, redeemed last week, and that's kind of the norm up before the, the sale. So you're down to 20s now, aren't you? Uh, probably, yeah. I think we're I think we're north of 20, but we're yeah, yeah. It's definitely in the 20s. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other updates? No. Okay. Um, non-elected personnel. Fif 15 minutes, HR, Roger Denton, County Counselor, Finance, and Commissioners. Roger Denton, two others. Isn't yeah. that what you said? Okay, yeah. I, was reading I thought he was. I was reading the same thing you're talking Sorry. about. Sorry. <laughs> you did say non elected. Yeah. I move to the Board of County Commissioners, recess in the executive session at 2.31. PM to discuss personnel matters and non elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75 4319B1. And that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee. And the board come out of executive session in 15 minutes in a commission room in the courthouse basement. And those present will be uh, the three commissioners HR, uh, Roger Denton, uh, and Finance Director. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. We will see you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I hope that. All right. If you're back in open session, um, I would look for a motion to approve the expenses that were presented today. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. <clears throat> okay, uh, before public comment, I just want to uh, make some notes for the public as well as our staff um, to know um, in the absence of um, our IT and emergency management director um, who wore several hats, um, we've got some points of contact for people. So anything IT related, uh, would be Mr. Scott Howard. Anything GIS related would be Appraiser Holly Hackathorn. Anything rescue related would be EMS Director Corey Scott. Um, and anything emergency management related would be Sheriff uh, Lori at, for the time being. So just wanted to make sure and make that known uh, for anybody wondering who the point person is. Um, that is. That is where we're at. Um, any public comment? Okay, seeing none. Um, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Thank you.